All right, we're back. Live stream number three of the day. This one's for the ladies. We're giving away an Arbor Cadence rocker right here. It was a demo from a rep, and there I don't think it's ever had a binding put on it, actually. I'm pretty sure it's brand new. I mean, it's still got the sticker on it. But, yeah, so it's a 147 women's Arbor Cadence. I just want to go over the rules with everyone one more time in case you're new and you're tuning into this. So, yeah. If you're new, you're tuning into this, this is how this works. You ask a question, I choose to answer it, you get a spin of the wheel. There are restrictions on questions, only questions about gear or pertaining to snowboarding, asking me about my feelings and opinions on shit, I don't give a fuck about that. Who cares? I can answer that in a regular live stream. No spamming, but there are no limits on questions. So if you do have questions and I missed one, you can copy and paste it back in. Just don't be like putting a hundred of them right down the road. All right. Uh, if you do win and you're an international winner, you do have to pay the shipping and the VAT on the snowboard for the mega prize. All the other prizes, I got you guys covered on that. I'll pay the shipping. It's not a big deal. We added another prize to the wheel. So there's another prize section on there, which I think that puts that up to about six. Also, I have a set of now IPOs, size small, perfect for a lady or a small dude. We now have those right next to the mega prize of the snowboard. So if you're looking for bindings, you might be able to win that. So yeah, got a brand, got a set of demo IPOs that have probably been used once. Uh, right there, my local rep, Peter Lowell, or the Plow, as some people know him. Also, if you do win, you have 24 hours to claim your prize. If you do not claim it in 24 hours, you do not get it. How do you claim your prize? I need a screenshot of your question as well as a screenshot proving that it is your account that actually did it. Email to info at angrysnowboarder.com. And then in the subject, you're going to put live stream number three plus the prize that you won. And then in the subject or in the body, I need you to put your address so that I can ship that stuff to you. All right. Also, Slim Whitman, fully disqualified. Fully disqualified. All right. So, see, we got some questions rolling in here. We're going to try to answer those. We're still starting to get more people back in this. So, it's slowly growing right now. I mean, last time we had a lot of people. So, definitely want to do that. So, let's see what we got going on here. Okay. All right. Well, let's see. Where are we? Uh, okay, Brian Acosta, I have a board I need to do a base weld on. What shape do you recommend cutting into the base? I've heard teardrops or circles, so there's no edges to peel back. Thoughts? Just fucking fill it. What you want to make sure, though, is that it's grooved so that the weld can actually go under what's left of the top sheet. So you want to make sure that there's, it's not like a straight line. If you cut anything, you want to make sure that there's a slight bevel to it. That way, if it's beveled, it has a less likelihood of pulling, and it also grips better with it. Okay? So, all right, Brian, let's give you a spin of the wheel. All right. We got a prize. Let's see what we got here. cardboard or something in it. I'm not sure what it is. Anyways, let's get that on, marked down. All right. Brian, you won that. Throw that in the bin. Okay. Vincent Dew, so what's the difference between men and women's boards besides the size and the flex? Graphics, duh. If it's pink, it's for women. If it's black, it's for dudes or goth chicks. Uh, no, so realistically, they size them so they're a little more narrower. They change the flex in there. Sometimes, you know, they try to build, like, rather than put as much carbon as would be in the guy's counterpart, they put a little bit less. They space it out a little bit different. So there is that with it as well. And like I said, graphics. Okay, Vincent, let's give you a spin. Small sticker pack for you. So 
yeah. And if you're just tuning in, make sure you get your questions over in the chat box or down below if you're on a mobile. I definitely want to try to answer you guys' questions. Also, we carried forward the leftover prizes from the last live stream. So there are more prizes in this one. I think we're up to, I think, almost 40 potential prizes for this live stream. So, yeah. Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay, KM, I want to get my girl aboard for 2021. She likes to ride the parking glitch. She's about five foot eight and rides a Capita. Children of the NAR right now. She's 20, so I want to get her a women's board. I, well, her height has really nothing to do with fuck all on that. I need to know her weight. But I assume if she's riding a Children of the NAR, she's fucking, what, like 60 pounds? Are you dating, are you dating an anorexic? Like, that just doesn't make sense. But, yeah, if you're really looking to get her a women's board... Go check out some of the women's capital lines. Like the birds of a feather is probably my guess is if she's on a children of the NAR, she's lightweight. So birds of a feather. I mean, you know, you could always put her on. You could win this. The Arbor Cadence rocker. Put her on that. That's a good one as well. Um, you know, pretty much anything's going to be a step up from that children of the NAR just because she's coming off of a kid's board and going to an adult board. So it's going to have a little more torsional full stiffness to it it's just going to be a little bit of a stiffer board but yeah let's uh let's give you a spin of the wheel remember to subscribe if you're new here remember to subscribe that's what the wheel tells you to do that's what you should be doing uh, okay let's see uh Alex Kumar, where do you see the tech of snowboard bindings going in the next five years, 10 years? I think what we're going to actually see is more repair shops having 3D printers to repair stuff right on the spot. And so you can get stuff done. I think that's going to probably be the future, at least in destination areas and whatnot. Um, overall, in terms of technology, it's going to be lighter weight construction, uh, lessening the dead spot under the foot for the binding so that there's more lateral and toe and heel play, play under there. So you can basically feel it more. I think there's going to be some new foams that come out for dampening as well. I think for the next two, maybe three years, we'll see a little bit more of a resurgence in step on technology and step ins and stuff like that. And then it'll slowly taper out from there. All right, Alex, let's give you a spin of the wheel. All right, prize. I don't know what this is, but you got it. Okay, who else is on here? What am I missing? I feel like I'm missing some questions. Okay, this comes from Olive Harrell. Why are women's boots so poorly built? By comparison, a men's low-end boot construction seems more durable than a high-end women's boot. The liner in women's boots suck. It depends on who's making your boots and whatnot, but by and large, they use the same foam in their liners across the board for most brands. It's like when you get to 32 and you start to see that they're – they have like the multiple different levels of liner and that's the difference in the foam and whatnot. That's where you see the difference in there. And with the women's stuff, they try to keep the price points down as well on certain models so that they, by doing that, they cut the cost on the liner foam. And that's just kind of across the board on that. The other thing is that they feel the average rider only goes seven days. The average female rider, I think is only like 3.5 or four days or something like that. So they're trying to cater to that market. So if you're not finding a boot in like a price point, you have to bump up to the stiffer one just to make sure that you get what you actually need out of the boot. In terms of overall construction, you can usually tell if you pick up a boot and look at it, like how it's built. Um, I thought I had a boot around here. Hang on. So, 
So like this is a high end boot from K2, and you can actually see when you start to look at the construction and like the endo construction and whatnot in there and the materials on it. One of the biggest telltale signs is if you can grab a boot right by the back by the back spine and you just flex it like this and see how much pressure you have to do and where it creases, or you grab the boot by the back spine and if you can just like squeeze it together really aggressively, even with one hand, that'll tell you if it's going to be um, crap or not, if they're using like cardboard or something in the back spot. Let's give you a spin of the wheel. Ooh, prize, all right. Let's see what we got here. Okay, got something here. I don't know what it is, but we got something. Where did I write that down? I need to keep track of that. All right. Well, that's one last thing. Okay, let's see. All right. Any other ladies have questions? I'm trying to find one. Uh, Thanks for all the super chats, guys. I appreciate them. Okay. Parker Goki, born to shovel for the wheel. All right. Okay. You just want to spin on the wheel. Prize. All right. I think it's bottle rockets. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see. Okay, Tyler Burns. I'm looking for an all mountain board bindings and all that, but I'm thin on cash. What key things should I look for? Last year's models or two-year-old models. So uh, we keep in the bottoms of all of our videos, there's description, there's links to different online stores like Evo, Backcountry, Christie Sports, uh, The House, Snowboards.com. And I think I might have even put something up for like Gear Co-op or whatever it is. Uh, but anyways, look for two-year-old or year-old models just because they're going to be discounted anywhere between 80, 40 and 80 percent. And, you know, you, you go and you look and you see what's available since you're on a budget. And then you go and look at the reviews because there's always going to be reviews of that stuff and figure out what fits your needs in there. But it's OK to skimp on that. The other thing you can do is go to Craigslist because there's always someone that decided to go gung ho and buy a bunch of really good shit. And they went three times and got their ass fucking handed to them. And it's on Craigslist. And they might have it listed for what they paid for it. Or they might just be blowing it out super cheap. So you can always hunt around on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace as well. And that will get you, like, finding stuff. But, you know, go and look. See what's available. See what's in your size and whatnot. And then check the reviews on it. And now if you're looking for boots... My recommendation is actually get fit for your boots. The best boot is the one that fits your foot. You want to make sure that your boots are dialed. So spend the majority of your money on your boots, like happy feet, happy shred life. And then you can kind of skimp on bindings and boards from there. I mean, you know, I have, I can pick and choose just about any board I want. And this right here is the Rome Warden. This is my personal board. I mean, it's, it's it's a fucking meat and potato snowboard. It's it's not fucking mind blowing. It's not like the greatest thing on earth. It's not like all the highest end tech. These are selling right now. I think they're like two eighty nine to three twenty nine online, depending where you look for a board. And it's a solid all mountain crusher with a little more of a freestyle focus to it. You know, so if you find like a last year's or a two year old one of that, go for it. Uh, let's see. <sighs> okay. 
Okay, XR4TI88. Nitro Highlander versus Custom X versus Carbon Flagship for East Coast. Hard charging and jumps with occasional switch riding to keep me honest. Uh, in all honesty, I probably wouldn't go with the Highlander. I, it would be closer to the Custom X versus the Flagship, the Carbon Flagship. The Carbon Flagship will be stiffer than the new Custom X, but not by much. They're roughly in the same category there. Uh, I think the Carbon Flagship will hold better on that East Coast snow conditions and the ice in there, but the Custom X will be slightly better on jumps uh, and switch riding. So it's going to come down to like what pros and cons you are looking for. <laughs> Oh, we got a prize. I think it's Kevin's fake teeth. I think it's Kevin's fake teeth. So, yeah. Do, 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 do. Write this down for you. Also, if you're just tuning in, you got questions, get them in that chat box, wherever it is on your device, and let me get those answered. If I choose your question, you get a spin of the wheel. You could win a women's arbor. Cadence Rocker. There's also a set of Now IPOs on that list as well, and there's countless other prizes that we're giving away. Okay. Edward James Prahula. Other options than the Lib Orca for free riding and pow slash. All right. Well, if we don't want to go with volume shifted, I always recommend the Endeavor Archetype, one of the best swallowtail Power boards out there. If you don't want the Swallowtail, get the Maverick. It's the solid tail basic version of that. Let's see. What else would I recommend? If you want something with a little more camber in it, check out the Kemper Aggressor. That's a good one. There's also the Telus Backslash, the K2 Cool Bean, K2 Simple Pleasures, or you can, if you want something a little softer than that, there's the new K2 Niseko Pleasures, which is just a softer, simple pleasures, more torsional give to it. Uh, if you're sticking with LibTech, you could go with the MC Wayfinder if you wanted to, but it will have a lot more rocker in the nose, so it's going to have some flap and whatnot to it as well. Uh, let's see. If you go over with Rome, there's the Pow Division Moontail, or if you want to wait till next year's, you could always do like the Rome Service Dog or the Stalefish. Those two are really solid as well. So you got a bunch of options. Hopefully it didn't overload you with that. But yeah. Uh, all right. Ed, let's give you a spin. All right. Small sticker pack for Ed. And you are a member of VIP. So. So, yeah, you just got your sticker packs. Gotta love Angry Snowboarder VIP. Okay. Kanto, hey, Angry, what do you think is the most dangerous feature on the mountain? Where do you see the most injuries? The unload ramp. That thing kills more people per year than anything else. Fucking say goodbye to your goddamn knees, back of your head, you're getting smacked with that chair. Fucking dumb motherfuckers that don't know how to get off. That is literally the most deadly fucking thing on the mountain. You watch a family from Texas or Florida that's never seen snow just going up. Be prepared to watch them die in front of you. I see it all the time. Hey, you want to get on with this? No, I want to live. Thank you very much. Are you sure? No, I got this. And as they're getting off, little Timmy skis clip up. He falls over on dad. Dad pushes mom over. He falls over on little Susie. She's fucking smothered to death. And I'm sitting there just swinging in the breeze, just like, huh, called it. And that's why the unload ramp is seriously the most fucking deadly thing on the mountain. All right. Let's give you a spin of the wheel, bud. Oh, so close to winning some bindings there, bud. Spin again. Well, you got a prize. Okay. Reach in, grab one of these. Uh, 
has definitely gloves. Ugh. Okay. Kyle Smith, is a high-end camera, Canon, Sony, better for filming than a GoPro? Pros and cons, also skier or snowboarder for filmer, if it matters. I mean, the big thing if for filming is someone that knows how to keep their speed, check their speed, and also stabilize the camera. The GoPro is actually way better right now. It's with, with the Hero 7 and then the Hero 8 with that, uh, what is it, hyper zoom or hyper lapse or hyper stabilizer, whatever the fuck they call it. It's gotten a lot better, so if you got – fucking michael j fox hand over there and you know you got the jimmies and shit going on you're going to be a little more stable with that shit so that makes the most sense for follow cam now if you're doing like a static shot yes obviously a higher end camera or something that has an interchangeable lens whether you go dslr or prosumer or something like that or something that has more in camera settings will be good but for most average people a gopro is literally all they're gonna fucking need for everything all right Let's give Kyle a spin here. Remember to subscribe. Kyle, if you're not subscribed, remember to subscribe. And if you're, any of you are new here, remember to subscribe. Okay. Okay. Gene Graves, why is the black snowbird to death better this year? Assume you mean 2021. Is it better than the Mercury? Will there be any changes to the Mercury? The Mercury does not change. The Capital Black Snowbird of Death got a whole overhaul, so it's all like it's all new in there. It's still a completely different board than the Mercury. Like the Mercury is like, oh hey, I'm riding a little bit of everything, and I don't know what it is, and I, you know I, I want to have fun and not like have to bring most of my A game. Grab the Mercury off the wall and fucking go with it. The new Black Snowbird of Death, I think it's more approachable for people, but it's still a hard charging, better carving. Just a little more aggressive board. Like if you if if you're going out with the boys, but it's like we're going open to close and it's fucking charge or die. That's where the black snowboard of death really fits in. The review of that will be coming out September ish, I think. Um, if you're a member of Angry Snowboarder VIP, I'm pretty sure that one dropped two days ago on there. So I've been dropping the written reviews early on Angry Snowboarder VIP for any members over there. All right, Gene, let's give you a spin of the wheel. All right, jumbo sticker pack for Gene Graves. Woo! I'm giving away so many stickers this week. Oh, my God. Thank God I own my own plotter and I can make them all myself. Okay. Uh, where were we? Okay, Imagine Wagons. Best board for fucking around. Slush Slasher, Cool Bean. If you're looking at those two, the Slush Slasher is going to be way better than the Cool Bean. It's got more torsional flex to it, in my opinion. It's just easier to manhandle. Uh, the Cool Bean will be more stable in everything. But that that's kind of it. Um... If we're talking like more like party boards for fucking around, I think the Telus Backslash is like one of my top picks. The Battalion Party Wave is up there. Uh, let's see what else is out there. If you need a twin cambered one, you could always go with the K2 Party Platter. War Pig is good. Super Pig is also another good one. So you got um, a few of those options right there. So yeah. Uh, let's see. So, all right. Imagine wagons. Let's give you a spin. What do we got? What do we got? Oh, middle finger. Bummer. Let's see. Kevin Ma, what size Honolulu for 180 pounds, riding most mainly Tahoe? So, looking at the interior plane project Honolulu board, I love. I own two of them. There's one sitting right over there. At 180 pounds, I think you want. Was it? 
54. Yeah, I think you want the 154. That would probably be the most ideal for versatility size. Like you could kind of ride everything with. If you're looking for it to be a little more camber freestyle, then bump it down to actually no, because that goes to a 50, doesn't it? That might be too short. Yeah, so 154, Kevin, looks like that would be the ideal size for you. Let's give it a spin. Middle finger again. Ouch. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Caught up on those questions. Let's check out a few more. Let's see. Drew Weisner, what kind of riding do you think the Jones Stratus is geared towards? I think it is for someone that likes to carve aggressively, is still going to chase some power, wants something a little bit stiffer with more camber underfoot that, so they can just really load that board up and push it to its limits. I haven't been able to get on the Stratus yet. I will be getting on the Stratus come this fall, but everything I've looked at and just everyone I talked to that's ridden it, that's kind of how that seems to fit. All right, Drew, let's give you a spin. <laughs> Oh shit, Drew, you just won a woman's board. Congratulations. You just won an Arbor Cadence for your lady friend. Uh, be sure to email me, info at angry snowboarder, and I will make sure to get that in the mail if you're a US citizen, if you're a European, Canadian, whatever, you've got to pay the shipping and the VAT on that. But yeah, you just won a snowboard. So you know what that means, people. We're putting the Kemper Screamer back up. Kemper Screamer is going back up on there, but we've given away two snowboards today. Two snowboards. You know you're jealous. You all want one. So we're putting the Screamer on there. Someone needs to win that. That board rips. It's aggressive. So let's see. What else are we going to... Okay. Oh, man, someone timed out Slim Whitman. Oh, man, poor Timmy. Uh, let's see. Titty Sprinkles, best women's specific wax. Brazilian. Brazilian wax. All right, Titty Sprinkles, what do we got for you? I think there's a shot glass in there. Maybe some vodka. Who knows? Who knows what's in there? But I'm super stoked that you guys are winning these boards because I really just don't need more snowboards sitting around my house. Plus, this was an excuse to get rid of board boxes. I have too many fucking board boxes sitting around this house that are empty. Okay. Wayne McKenzie, any thoughts on the Battalion Thunder? Dude, love that board. Oh, my God. That thing is fucking phenomenal uh, for next year. It's a new board, but it's based off the women's storm. So it's actually a guy's board based off of a women's board. Uh, really versatile all-mountain board. Super crushes it. If you like 3D and you uh, 3BT and camber, it's got you covered right there. So, yeah, super solid board right there. Uh, definitely have a review of that coming out in the fall. I got to ride that back in February. So, yeah, really digging that. All right, Wayne, spin the wheel. Ooh, loser. Oh, sorry, Wayne. Let's see. Okay. Well, oh, this is a good one from Caveus Billy. If your local shop sells on Amazon, how much does Amazon take from them? Should we just buy from the showroom if we really want to support them? So 
a lot of little mom and pops actually have started selling on Amazon because then they don't have to fight to create a whole web presence to compete with backcountry Evo and shit like that. Like uh, my local shop gravity over at copper, they actually use Amazon to sell. Amazon takes about 20% from them. So it, you know, it's the equivalent of actually hiring someone to be there on the floor, but it opens them up to a broader market. Obviously if your local shop sells on Amazon, but it's your local shop, if you can go down there and buy, fuck yeah, go down there and buy. Save them that 20% headache and shipping and bullshit and just go in and pick it up, slap them a high five, maybe drink a beer with them, bring them some donuts, bring them some pizza. Fuck yeah, support your local shop. I mean, I support I support two of my local shops. I support Gravity at Copper and I support the Underground here in Breckenridge. Those are my two local shops. I actually was at Underground yesterday picking up some stuff, some boot fitting supplies for the Boot Fitting 201 series that we've got coming out uh, in August. So, yeah, but uh, a lot of people don't realize that when they're like, oh, don't shop on Amazon for your snowboard equipment. A lot of that is actually sold by small mom and pop shops. Um, so you you are kind of helping them in the grand scheme of things. All right. Hey, let's spin that. Woo, jumbo sticker pack for you, bud, if you want it. I got your address. You're a member of Angry Snowboarder VIP. Okay. Okay. Op Freak X, best area that has professional engineering jobs and close to decent riding mountains. So you realistically, if you're talking about the U.S. and engineering, um, depends what kind of engineering you're doing, but Seattle makes the most sense. Like if you go to work for Boeing or somewhere like that, because in about four hours roundabout, you've got Baker, you got Summit at Snoqualmie, 45 minutes outside the city. So you got four resorts there, two hours to Stevens, unless it's a weekend, then you're fucked and it's about 10 hours. You got Crystal Mountain as well. You could drive across the border and go up to Vancouver, hit those resorts. You could go to Whistler, you can drive down to Mount Hood. So there's that. Uh, otherwise, Sacramento will get you up to Tahoe, or you could go down to San Francisco as well. And that gets you to the other side of Tahoe. You could do Reno if you really wanted to. And then you could date Vanessa Tracy. Uh, let's see. There's also Salt Lake City has some stuff going on there. Denver, but Denver fucking sucks. And then, you know, if you're working a Monday through Friday job, you're going to do that. So you got to really ask yourself, like, are these areas that are developing and they need these people or are these areas that have been developed and are continuing to grow and they're crowded as fuck? Like Bozeman, Montana right now, from what I've heard from some of my friends, is starting to blow up. And it's still not – it's like how Denver was 15 years ago. And I'd be like, fuck it. Get in now while you can. You know, so it, there's those types of things. All right. I'm Freak X. Let's give you a spin. Ooh, prize. All right. I think it's a dead cat. It's definitely a dead cat. I don't think I killed it, but maybe I did. Definitely a dead cat. Okay. Sweet. All right. Uh, okay. Kurt Nagahori with the super chat. What is the best carving all mountain deck that is still playful enough for some nice butters and presses? It will be complimenting my slush slasher. Best carving all mountain deck. So, uh, you know... If you're cool with it and still directional, you could do the Nidecker Tracer. Otherwise, next year's Rome Service Dog or even uh, the Stalefish. Those boards you can rip a carve on, and the nose platforms on them are still good to butter. Uh, let's see what else. Um, eh, no, not that. Uh, Tell us backslash for sure should be put on that list. The Kemper Apex, uh, which we're giving away in the fourth live stream at five, four, starting at 5.45 today, this one's actually really fun for ripping carves on. It's just volume shifted. You got it, it grips really well. You got a good platform to butter on as well. So that is always a fun one too. So, uh, yeah, that, that could be something to look forward to. Um, Okay, where were we? Brett 
Brian Minkle, young dad here. What's a good board to invest in for a toddler growing into a little grown that I can pass down to my youngest a year or two later? Pretty much any of the new kids stuff that's coming out is actually really solid. Um, you know, if they're still at that toddler stage where they're not really full blown walking perfectly or they're just starting to, but they still fall, fall down. I think like the Burton riglets are perfectly fine. Plus you can always get the little pull behind things. So that way you can just shove them in there and then just drag them across the base area to the lift. You know, you just pull the little toe strap and go from there with it. All right, Brian, let's give you a spin of the wheel. Prize. There's something in here. It's soft. I don't know what it is, but it's in there. Anyways, yep, so throw that one in there. Also, to go back to that question, Kids Gear has really good resale value. So if you can just buy the Kids Gear used, just do it. Like You'll save so much fucking money. Or just get a seasonal rental from a snowboard shop if they've got it. Because that way if Little Junior grows in the middle of the season or their foot grows, you can just go in and swap it out too. So forgot, should have mentioned that. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Philip Chesnock, is the dinosaurs will die, never not? Is it worth it for Park and his five gear worth invest? Oh, you're going for two for one on this? Oh, sneaky little bastard. It's a two for one question in there. Uh, you can ride Park on the never not. It's fine. It's twin contact point to contact point. It only looks directional in shape, and you can still slam it back. I have a 57 Brewster, which is what became the never not. And I've definitely ridden it for park. I mean, it'll do that. As far as five gear worth investing in, I have friends that swear by it, and I have friends that tell me it's cheap shit. I feel like you're kind of just playing the guessing game with that stuff. So, yeah. All right. Let's give you a spin, Phil. Remember to subscribe. If you're new here, remember to subscribe. Okay. Uh. Rob Games, which edge tech is most effective? Burton Frostbite, LibTech Magna Traction, Arbor Grip Tech, um, and then uh, Traction Tech from, I think it was at Jones or something like that. Uh, basically, my personal opinion is Grip Tech from Arbor is the one that works the absolute best. And here's why it makes the most sense if you really think about it. You've got this bump right right at the inserts. It's literally giving you edge grip right at the inserts. It, that Right where you need it the most on their reverse camber. It makes the most sense to me. But at the same time, if you're like really looking to cut some serrations in the snow, like what Kemper's got going here with this waveform in there, what is it? I think they call it shark bite edge or something like that. But yeah, this, this also gives you more control between the feet just with the camber profile. Like they all have their pros and cons. It kind of comes down to how you are as a rider and what your personal preference are. Like I don't like the early generations of Matt Magna Traction. I liked when Smokin did their first year with Magna Traction and Jay had looked and was like, oh, that's how they did it. And he hand bent the edge and he built his serration a little bit different. It wasn't like the old Magna Traction used to come out and go to a direct point like this. His was more subtle and nuance to it so it actually gripped a little bit better all right rob let's get this spin. all right small sticker pack for you bud okay let's see <sighs> okay
Okay, water bottle. I pre-ordered the spring break power twin already and have a ride alter ego that's just about dead. Um, dead, a pillow monster and an IPP hunt only. Should I have gone with something else or will I be fine with my jet ski logic? It's got jet ski on it, dude. Fucking send it, man. You're fucking good, dude. Actually, I think you got pretty much everything covered that you could need in there. So there's a little overlap between the Pow Twin and the Pillow Monster, but that alter ego is stiffer, and you can flip the uh, clip on the tail to make it a swallowtail or a solid tail. IPP, Honolulu, True Twin. I think you got every base at that point completely covered, and you should be good for boards, barring you breaking them or getting fat, uh, good for like a year or two. <laughs> Okay, what do we got for you? Yep, um, that's definitely the squirrel I ate for dinner last night. So, yeah, you just won a dead squirrel. Good for you. Throw that in the pile over there. Let's see. Who has a question that's new here? Uh, okay. Okay, this is actually a really good question from Kai Spitzer. How good do you have to be to get sponsors? It's not how good you are. It's how well you can talk to them to get sponsored. It's sponsorship is like 90% bullshit and 10% riding. Like if that wasn't the case, some of these people wouldn't fucking have sponsors. Like they've been fucking sandbagging for years. Let's be honest about this. Like all a company is looking for is how well you can move a product for them. Like I always joke that I'm sponsored by the whole snowboard industry. Like shit just shows up and I fucking ride it. That's it. Like I'm not a good rider. I fucking suck. I know that I'm fine with it. I, I openly admit it. I don't really give a fuck. I have nothing to prove anymore. I'm 37 years old. I'm going to be 38 my days of trying to spin to win and shit are way the fuck over. I just want to test stuff and go on with it. So going into that, it's, it's how you sell yourself and your ability to sell product. Like they want to see what you can do for them. Like if they give you one board, are you going to move 10 boards or are you going to get a board and then you break it? Oh, this is the worst hunk of shit. Or are you going to be the kid that breaks it? And they're like, fixes it and still keeps riding it and telling people it's great. That's what they're really looking for. It's all about marketability and what you can do to move the product yourself. If you can't move product, you're fucking worthless to them. Like in all honesty, this whole idea of chasing the fucking sponsorship thing, it's kind of dumb with the way technology media and everything is going. You'd be better off becoming a vlogger or someone that's just putting out banger park at it's all you're creating a following, selling stuff through affiliate links and going to companies and being like, Hey, I was reviewing this board or I got this board from the rep and I'll link to nothing but your products in this video. Can you guys give me a board? Blah, blah, blah. And working deals like that. It's all about like the whole game is about to fucking change. And I don't think people even understand that. Like the, the whole dynamic of sponsored snowboarding is just going to be such a different world in the future. All right, Kyle, let's give you a spin. Jumbo sticker pack. All right. There you go. More stickers going out. Okay. Also, for any of you guys that are just tuning in, you're new here, whatever's going on, we're giving away that Kemper Screamer right now. Someone has won the women's snowboard. We have a set of now IPOs on there. All you need to do to win is ask a question that I choose to answer. And I give you a spin of the wheel. If it hits, it hits. If it doesn't, it doesn't. If you do win, all you need to do is take a screenshot of your question on the chat box, as well as a screenshot of proof that it's your account. Email it to info at angry snowboarder. In the subject line, you put live stream number three and the prize that you won. And then you put your mailing address in there. That's it. That's all you have to do. If I feel like someone's cheating, I have another verification method that I hopefully will not have to use, but I can. Okay, uh, let's see. Let's see, okay. Also, for anyone that wants to buy Angry Snowboarder merchandise like this, we are get, we're selling mystery boxes on angrysnowboarderstore.com. 
my boy Bottled and Cork has put it in the chat box. You can click the link right to the big cartel and uh, store and get stuff. So, yeah. Okay. Let's see. Jorge Morales, how does side cut affect the personality of a, of a board? What are your preferences? I really have no preference. I just fucking go and ride it. Side cut to the point, like, some of them are more aggressive. Some of them are less aggressive. Some of them tend, like, they can be aggressive, then more mellow between the feet. The real big thing is taking into consideration the camber profile and the flex pattern of the board, especially that torsional flex or right where the flex is at the contact point on the nose and the tail. So that way it'll tell you how you're going to drive it in and out of turns otherwise like all these guys that get hung up on the fucking tech spec number of shit like it it it, uh, it doesn't matter i mean it's not like you're trying to compare like the liter of fuel going into your engine like a 3.2 liter versus a 2.8 liter it's it's not the sim the same in any sense of the word all right jorge let's give you a spin Oh, all right. Or hey, my man, you just want to set a size small now IPOs. Good for you, buddy. All right. Well, take that off the wheel now. All right. Turn that back into what it was originally. Loser. Okay, well. There you go, Jorge. You just won some bindings. Okay, let's see. Well, we still have that Kemper Screamer up on there, guys, so you can still win a snowboard during this live stream. And as you can tell, since two people hit in this live stream, the possibility of winning is there. Okay. Let's see. Wesley Wheeler, lady specific party boards or pow boards she can rip on a grimmer. So they do make a K2 Cool Bean in the 38. They make a smaller sized Orca. Uh, let's see what else is out there. Um, you can put her on the Telus Backslash. So you can put her on the, the extra small War Pig or the extra small Super Pig. Plus, there's also the Psycho Candy from Ride. So there's three options right there. Uh, there's one other one from K2, and I can't think of it right now. Oh, there is a party platter from K2 in her size. Uh, let's see. Now, I think there's a women's version of the Party Wave from Battalion, too. If not, there's a smaller version of the Party Wave. I think it's, what, like 44? So, yeah, there's definitely some options there. All right, Wesley, let's give you a spin. <laughs> Oh, we got a prize. Okay. It's soft. It's squishy. It smells like Kevin. I think this might be his mullet that we cut off the other day. Okay. Well, congratulations, Wesley. You won something. All right. Also, super stoked for everyone that's winning prizes right now. If I don't have all the excitement right now, it's uh, I've been standing for a couple hours. My knees are locking up. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Netatan and Burton Fish 3D or Burton Big Gulp as a dedicated power board. EST Malavita is already in hand. <sighs> I've never been a huge fan of the fish in all honesty. Like some people have a boner for it. I, every time I've ridden it, I've never been amused. I'm curious about the 3d fish. Kevin thinks it's going to be solid. I would say big gulp probably makes more sense to me as the choice that I would go with. So yeah, uh, that would probably be it. Okay. Netatana, let's give you a spin. <laughs> All right, well, dig into the prize pack here. What do we got? It's a little thicker. 
Smells like asparagus. It's possum urine. All right. You just won some possum urine. You can use it for hunting food. Okay. Let's find some more questions here. Also, for anyone that's got questions on Kemper Snowboards, Jib Hunt, the owner of Kemper Snowboards, is in the chat. So if you want to talk to him, ask him some questions, go right ahead. Uh, once again, shout out to Jib for donating two snowboards for today's live streamathon. Really stoked on that. Um, these are boards that I have ridden and I have reviewed. I really loved that Apex from them as a volume shifted board. It's right up there with the Telus Backslash, which I own. So just so you know. Uh, the Kemper Screamer right back here is probably closer to like a niche story. So, uh, yeah. Okay, let's see. Jeff DeMoose 776. What would be a better park mess around board? The IPP Haro or the Capita Assimilator? Personally, I love both those boards, but I would go with the Assimilator. I like the fact that it's got that asymmetrical side cut to it. And I also think that it presses a little bit easier out in the tip and the tail. All right, Jeff, let's give you a spin. All right, Jeff, you're getting some stickers. Got a jumbo pack there. So, yeah, got to counterbalance this table. It's all shaky. Okay, uh, let's see. Slushy Shredder, looking at getting the LibTech E-Jack knife or the Captain Mercury for this up-and-coming season. What are the major differences between the two besides magnet traction? Mostly groomers in trees. So the biggest difference you're going to notice right away is the flex pattern and the camber profiles. Um, the Mercury will ride more like a traditional camber, whereas the E-Jack is like a camber 2.0. It's got a bigger flat section where the camber section comes down to the tip and the tail. Uh, also, you got a – I think it, the E-Jack has a little bit more setback to it. Um, I think that the E-Jack, obviously, with the magnet traction, holds an edge better, but the Mercury is easier to engage an edge. The E-Jack will also be slightly stiffer than the Mercury. All right. Slushy Shredder, let's give you a spin. Ooh, spin again, but in reverse. All right, anyone tuning in, click like. Give this video a thumbs up for me, guys. Please, thank you. All right, and let's see. Okay, Keith Morrison, is it foolish to think I can split board low angle trees without avi gear? Recipe for death? It's your life, it's your choice, but just remember your consequences, your actions have consequences and you have to deal with it. So ask yourself if you die out there with no gear all alone, who's going to be fucking upset? Who's going to find your body? Are you going to, is your corpse going to get raped by a Sasquatch? These things are things you got to ask yourself. I mean, does your mom want to have to identify your body after a Sasquatch pillaged your bunghole? Yeah. I mean, that's that's it. It's your choice, your life. I think it's stupid as fuck. I think you should be doing everything you can to educate yourself, getting the proper equipment, learning how to use the proper equipment, and making it better. Being out there to help set an example to people so stupid shit doesn't happen, so less people get raped by Sasquatches. Seriously. Sasquatch is over there. I mean, you might get lucky and he'll use a rattlesnake as a sheath for his dick as a condom. But otherwise, you're just going to get raped. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, where were we? You know, I've got to give you a spin of the wheel there, Keith. Okay. Oh, reverse spin. And you win a prize. Let's see what we got here. Mm, don't know what it is. It's very soft. It's 
probably instructions to my uh, VCR. So there you go, Keith. You went in instructions to my VCR. Everyone should have instructions to the VCR. It's a very important thing. VCR repair is the career of the future. Okay. Okay. The summer yay. What things should people do that are underrated before or after snowboarding? So before you go snowboarding, making sure that you have stretched. That is key. That loosens you up. You don't want to go out there and fucking hurt yourself, pull a hamstring or anything like that. Also, check your screws. No one wants to be with that person that's up on the mountain with them riding. It's, oh, man, i got to go tighten my fucking bindings. Yeah, I just got up here. It's my first fucking lap. Oh, I'm a fucking pickle dick. Also, take a shit before you get there. That's that's clutch. You don't want to have... Resort bathrooms are fucking disgusting, man. I haven't pooped in one of those in fucking years. We want to do it. After snowboarding, obviously, we want to manage to... Drink water, get your electrolytes up, probably eat. If you can, stretch a little bit. Take a nap. That's always good. Wipe down your boards, you know, wipe everything down. If you got a boot dryer, put that in your boots. You know, these are just very general maintenance type things that you should be aware of and should want to do to help just make sure that your next day on the hill is easier for you. All right, let's give you a spin of the wheel. Ah, spin again. Oh, loser. Bummer. Do, 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 do. Okay, David B., my girlfriend has an older GNU Velvet and finds it too soft. Is there a stiffer ladies' Mervin board you can recommend for her? We're on the ice coast. Uh, well, you could bump her up to, like, a classy. Um, there's a women's rider's choice, although that's endorsed by Jamie Anderson, and she doesn't believe in vaccines, so we need to not support her because she's out to kill us all. Uh, fucking shoving crystals up her ass will not cure cancer. Um uh, yeah, I'd say probably go with the classy. There's one other. Oh, what's that other one? Oh, you could do a B Pro, depending which model, because like, there's a couple versions of the B Pro out there too. So you could always do that as well. All right, David B, get in the spin. Spin again. Okay, what do we got? Feels like a woodchuck skull. Perfect. Getting that woodchuck skull. Okay, so we're up to 107 people in here. If you haven't got your questions in the chat box, get it in there. I'm going to try to answer it. If I choose your question, you get a spin of the wheel. Still got plenty of prizes. We're not quite out yet. Looks like we got about maybe 10 more of those. We do have a snowboard still on the wheel. You could win this Kemper Screamer in here. I personally wrote it. I think I'm the only one that has ridden it. So, yeah, uh, got that going on. Uh, let's see. Okay. John Omler, industry question. Is it worth pursuing a job career in the industry? A lot of people I've met in the industry seem like they want to keep people out who they don't approve of. Well, duh, it's a gatekeeper position, man. There's a lot of shitty people that work in the snowboard industry. I have to deal with them. I get really fucking sick of these people. They're like, we're not going to work with you because I don't fucking like you and I don't like what Angry's about because I want to go suck Stan off at Snowboarder Mag and Pat Bridges can fucking bend me over and fist fuck me in the ass. Yeah, and that person goes into the marketing and then I can't get boards to ride and then, you know, they get fired and move on. There's a high turnover rate in the snowboard industry. If you want to be in here, you've got to understand you're not going to make a lot of money. You're not going to get fucking rich. It's a passion project that you're going to devote lots of hours to and your return is going to be very minimal. Like the people that make the most money out of snowboarding are the ones that are usually the most passionate about it and understand that you're playing the long game, not the short game. Like there's a reason why there's these marketing and sales guys that have worked for 
They've been here for 30 years and they've worked for 30 companies. So they're switching jobs every year. They just get fucking passed around. That's it. They move around. They don't really do anything. The other thing is there's a lot of hurdles with it. Like you go to work for a company and it gets bought by a bigger company and suddenly they're saying you can't spend the money or you want to do these cool fucking projects and shit. And suddenly, Oh, well we don't have the budget for it. Like snowboarding is not like a get rich quick fucking industry. Like you're not, you, you've got to diversify and figure out all this shit. Would I recommend anyone working in it? Fuck yeah. If you are really passionate and you can bring something new to the table, go fucking do it. We need it. Like there's a lot of old stale blood. Like, my theory is after the age of 40 in snowboarding, you kind of just fucking ruin everything for anyone else. Like you should be retired or out of it or like have other people working under you. They're young blood and doing shit and you're just sitting back collecting a check. Like that's, that's how it should fucking be. So yeah, uh, there we go. All right, let's give you a spin. Of the All right. Remember to click like people. We're up to 61 likes in here. I expect to see more. Okay. Uh, let's see. Vector Villain, where do you pee on the mountain or do you buy a second hydration bladder and connect it to your wiener? You ever been on a gondola that smells like piss? That's me marketing my fucking territory to let you know I'm around. I'll pee on the chairlift. I'll pee on the lifty. I'll pee off the chairlift onto the lifty. I don't give a fuck. Dude, I'm a guy. I can stand and piss anywhere. I just go in the trees, whip it up, and just pray to God I don't piss off some hibernating squirrel that's after my nuts or some shit. I mean, it's a little harder if you're a chick. you got to squat to pee. That's why I recommend buying a shiwi. Then you can stand and just pew. All right. All right. Well, you just won that Kemper Screamer. Woo! Got fucking three snowboards given away today. So there we go, bud. You just won a snowboard for asking a pee question. How's that for you? Didn't expect to get that one, did you? Holy shit. Woo! All right. I'm going to put a different board up there. And that's not a prize. I just wanted to put that up there. Okay, well, we still got a few more prizes, and technically i got another half hour before this live stream's over. We'll have another one on at 545. We're going to be giving away a Kemper Apex. So we got one more snowboard to give away today right here. Kemper Apex, Kurt Heine Pro model. So uh, this board is super fun, actually. Really enjoyed riding this. Uh, so yeah, shout out to Kemper Snowboards for giving us two snowboards to give away. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Vanessa Tracy, since it's the women's hour, what do you think about the Shiwi? I think it's unhygienic as fuck. I love the concept of it. It's the funniest shit on earth. Chicks standing around just shooting piss. It's fucking great. It's so funny. It's such a novelty joke. But at the same time, it kind of like, it kind of works at the same time. I. <laughs> It's just like, but once you use it, like you got urine, like you have to have a bag to put it back in. Otherwise, you're just putting it in your pocket or your backpack, and urine's getting on sick because it didn't dry off. Uh. Okay, story thirty three thirty three. Should I get a lock for my board? I don't ever see people lock their boards. Remember this: board thieves are creatures of opportunity. If you give them the opportunity, they will take it. I take a board lock with me to the mountain mainly because I ride two snowboards, so I can go up to the rack and lock a board while I go ride for a couple hours, come back down, swap it out, lock that one up, and go ride. My shit's never been stolen. 
I've had friends have their stuff stolen. I've only ever had one board stolen from me, and that was off my condo here in Breckenridge. Uh, and I'm pretty sure I know who the little scum fuck was that did it, and I put the fear of God into him because he ended up moving away about a week later. I think when you tell people, yeah, there's a propane tank right next to your trailer. It could magically blow up. Uh, shit kind of changes. So, yeah. All right. Oh, shout out to my boy, Thunder Tyndall. He works for a bunch of different brands. He's a good dude. But Mr. Angry Snowboarder, the Industrial Revolution changed the face of the modern novel forever. Discuss, citing specific examples. Can I just get your my wife the whore instead? Damn you. You don't get a spin of the wheel. You work for a company. Okay, uh, let's see. Oh, here's a good one from David Barnes. How many more brands are Nidecker going to consume and take over Snowboard? All of them. They're buying, they're buying Arbor next. That's just a given. They're getting Arbor. After Arbor, they're going to go swoop Solomon. DC is going to get out of Snowboards, and they're just going to go in. 32 is going to go up for sale. They're going to get them, then have another boot brand. While they're at it, they might just go over to Prada and be like, hey, Volcom, we want you, and just whoosh, suck that up. Burton's going to hold out for a while, at least another five years, and then they're going to buy it. I don't know. Right now, your guess is as good as mine. Um, with all the fucking brands that are dealing with all sorts of the uncertainty and shit, I'm sure that they'll either sell a brand or they will buy another brand, depending on if the price is right. All right, David, give me a spin of the wheel. All Damn. You would have won, but there was no prize. And that got taken off. So, all right. Well, can't believe it. that thing's been hitting today. Whew. Okay, Sam Schmidt. Best spot to start in the snow industry. Lifty, shopper. Don't start as a lifty. Do not. Those ground level bullshit jobs at the resort do not get you unless you're trying to become a lift mechanic or do lift maintenance or some shit like that. Like, you want to be in like the actual snowboard industry working for a shop is way better because that's going to introduce you to reps. Reps are going to need you to work demos with them. Working demos with them is going to lead to be like, Hey, maybe I can hire this kid to be a tech rep for me in the area, which means you're going to start doing clinics, which means when that rep wants to get out, he's going to give you his territories. Possibly there's a potential for that. The other thing is most people that end up in marketing or design positions or any of the higher ups, they started out in a shop. Like the snowboard shop is really clutch for building those connections, understanding your markets and whatnot. It teaches you how to sell a snowboard to a person face to face, which is an invaluable skill. If you've never sold a snowboard to someone, like you never know what you're going to get. And it teaches you how to just think on the fly, talk to people, sell, get them in the right product. Like, like with what I do, I've done so many different things in snowboarding, but one of the things that makes what I do with product reviews so more relatable and why everyone's like, Oh, you're so honest and relatable is I've sold snowboards to everyone's face. I've sold hundreds of thousands of snowboards to people's face. It's the difference between when you look at someone like James Beastie from the good ride, I mean, he's over there stumbling and stuttering thumb Jack in his fart box. That dude has never sold a snowboard to someone's face. I can walk over and be like, Oh, okay. Hey, Oh yeah. You're looking at this board. Oh, it's the Rome cruiser. Are you looking for a party board that can kind of do everything? Yeah. You know, Oh, you're on a budget. You don't want the actual Stolly stale fish or his pro model, but you want a cruiser board. This is it. It's on the budget. This is going to hit those numbers. You know, it's all about knowing the product and stuff like that. And that helps you get in contact with people. The other thing is like when you start in a shop, you work your way up, you end up meeting marketing people. And sometimes they pull you in to be like an in-house product developer and stuff like that. And product development is really cool. And if you've got an engineering side, they'll tell you like the ins and outs of what you're trying to do to learn that. So, you know, learn SolidWorks, learn 3D computing, learn CAD, stuff like that. And it can lead to other things in there. The shop is way more valuable than being a fucking lifty. Like you want to be miserable and hate your fucking life and probably get frostbite and herpes. Go be a fucking lifty. That's, that's just a fucking given. You're going to be crusty as fuck. You want to actually have some fun and like have and get to ride and shit? Go work in a shop for sure. All right, Sam, let's give you a spin. All right, Sam, got a prize. Let's see what we got here.
baby fetus. Definitely a baby fetus. It's cool though. You can pull the stem cells out of it and inject it in your knees. And it'll be able to snowboard longer. All right. Okay. Oh, here's a good super chat from Eric Kostinen. Was the simple but coolest trick on a snowboard? Turning. Turning is like the most simple and coolest trick because when it fucking clicks, it opens the door for everything else. It teaches you how to carve. It teaches you how to set up for a jump or a rail. Turning is the coolest fucking trick out there. All right. Eric, give me a second. All right, let's see what we got here. Hmm. Feels like a butt plug. Okay. All right, we're going to take a few more questions. Going to dip out a little early on this live stream just because I need to get ready for the last final live stream where we're going to give away that Kemper Apex. Plus, we got more prizes I got to bring in. This bin's getting a little low. So, yeah. Okay. Let's see. Okay, David Westbrook. Is it worth buying a 2021 board or getting last year's model? Was thinking of the LibTech box knife. It comes down to like, I mean, nothing's really changing in that board, if I remember correctly. I think that's one that's like just a graphic. I mean, if the graphic is your thing, I guess fucking go for it. But if you can save money and put that money towards going snowboarding more, like more lift tickets, gas, whatever, I'd fucking buy a last year's board, take the money I saved, and fucking go shred more. That's just me personally. So. That's how I do it. Um, obviously, like if you can't find the last year's in your size, you're probably going to have to get that 2021. But yeah, that's that's what I would do. All right, David, give me a spin. Remember to subscribe. If you're new here, remember to subscribe. The wheel tells you to do it. You should do it. Okay, Alex Salvatore. Does an impact with no dent in a helmet warrant a new one? When do I need a new helmet? First off, so if you never impact your helmet at all, two years is about the shelf life of a helmet. You should be replacing them every two years uh, just to be safe on that. Now, if you've had an impact with the helmet, but there's still no dent, it depends on how hard. I mean, if you're just like, uh, and you just like lightly into like the lift, the chair lift or something, you're probably fine. You fucking rang your bell. I would definitely recommend getting a new one. I mean, you only got one brain, and you really don't want to be a vegetable shitting yourself, having someone wipe your ass when you're 45 years old, eating through a fucking tube, do you? No, I didn't think so. Brain damage is a fucking serious thing. You don't want that. Take care of yourself. It's a $100 investment to protect yourself. Fucking go for it. So, yeah. Ah, okay, let's see. So we got to spin that wheel for you there, buddy. Where the fuck did you go? Oh, there you are. Okay. Oh, middle finger. Oh, sorry. Okay. Oh, God. That's an awful question. Uh... Kirk True, why do you think Nitro removed the Fury from their lineup? It didn't fucking sell. There's people that love that board, but for most average people, they probably didn't. Also, look at how big the fucking Nitro line is. It is literally the biggest line of snowboards in snowboarding. It is bigger than Burton. They have more skews. It's like, oh, we got the team. We got the team pro model. We got the team going. We got the team flat to rocker, blah, blah, blah. 
fucking five SKUs for the same board. Like, cause they put five different camera profiles and then they put a limited edition graphic and then they made a pro model with it too. They were probably just cutting their line. I mean, and all honestly, the night, the fury was good, but it wasn't great. It was like, I've ridden better fucking snowboards. So yeah. Okay. Kirk. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Digging in. What do we got here? Ooh, David Carradine's autoerotic scrap. That's how he died. That's what you're getting. So. All right. Throw that one in the pile. Okay. Well, I was going to be on for another 15 minutes, but I think I'm going to cut it early right now, guys. Remember, 5.45, so in one hour, we will be doing another live stream. You can win a Kemper Apex 152 Kurt Heine Pro Model. Should have about 30 more prizes in the prize bin. Going to put some other stuff up on the wheel, just kind of mix things up. So it's going to be the same rules, but I just need to go get ready, stretch. My legs are cramping. So, yeah. Anyways, so if you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing anything. And if you really want to support us, you can swing over to Angry Snowboarder VIP. Could tell you more here. Got the whole video over there that explains it. If you want to buy Angry Snowboarder merchandise, swing on over to angrysnowboarderstore.com. We got mystery boxes for sale for $65 a pop in there. And I've been your host, Avery Lefebvre. I'll continue to be your host, and um, I'll probably will be your host again. So remember that. Anyways, guys, I'll see you in the next live stream.